Hi, I'm Joel Grimes. I'm gonna show you how I use three lights to create my composites. All right, so when it comes to creating a composite, one of the challenges you have is obviously getting the lighting to match the background. And one of the, one of the things that I learned early on, kind of by mistake, was that if I have two edge lights, and then of course an overhead light, which fills in this part of the front part of the subject, those two edge lights create a balance that when I drop it into a background, it pretty much works with any background. Now, there is usually only generally one major source of light, um, whether it's the sun or it's even if on an overcast day, you still have light, usually it comes in one direction. Sometimes it's from the top. But the point is, is that having two edge lights gives me a balance to create depth that is pretty much believable. Now, one of the things I've been doing lately is that I'll take one of the edge lights and down power it just a little bit so I have my model turn into the one light source and then have it a little bit stronger, which gives it more of a realistic effect. But my goal is to create a portrait that I can drop into a background that sells the overall fake. And it's a challenge. And the other thing that I do, obviously, is have to do a lot of you know, Photoshop techniques to do that, to pull that off. But anyway, so here's how I do it. I have um, the large 36 by 48 boxes behind me, and I always put grids on them, and that is to minimize flare going into my lens. I happen, in fact, right now we were shooting at 24 millimeter focal length on a full frame camera. That's pretty wide. So at a wide zoom like that, I'm gonna get a risk of getting flare. So the grids minimize that. I have these boxes lined up so that the, the one part here is about equal to the shoulder. And we have our beautiful model, Allie, here. And it does help to have a great subject in front of your lens. So what my goal is to get the light to hit her cheeks so that I have a little bit of a glow coming around. Now, if she steps back into, you know, toward the wall, that glow is going to come around the front, and then you lose the whole effect. So you, want the, you don't want the glow just to hit her ears, or in this case, the hair, because her hair is actually covering her ears. But the point is, I want that glow to fall right about that edge, to fall right about there. And everyone's face is a little different, so there's not a perfect formula other than you just start moving the subject, moving the lights a little bit to get that to fall perfectly. The second thing I have to do, once I get my edge lights, is I want this overhead light here to fill in what I would call, let's say it's zone three. So we call this zone one, zone two, zone three. And by powering up the value and the, the, the uh, output down, I will fill in the, the uh, zone three part of it. So if I want a beauty fashion, a really beauty shot, I would bring the value up. If I want a little bit edgier, especially with my sports subjects, I take the value down. And only you as an artist can really determine what is the perfect value. So by looking at the back of my monitor, it tells me if I'm right on or not. not. It kind of gives me a gauge of whether or not I'm where I want to be. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, we're going to set it up, and I'm going to purposely down power this light, show you what it looks like too dark, and then we're going to work up and fill it in until it looks exactly the way I want it. All right, so what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna show you what it looks like with this down powered, and I always use a fill card up underneath. So I'm gonna just continuously, I'm gonna try that, and we'll, we'll show you without in a minute. But So I'm gonna bring the fill card just out of frame, and I'm gonna fire one off here. And so the value on zone three is way too dark. So she, now if it was a sports shot, maybe I'd get away with it. But for this, it's kind of like in between a beauty approach. I don't want it too filled up in the zone three, but I want to get some depth and some value uh, change between zone one and two and three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my power up. So let's go, what would probably be about a, maybe a stop, maybe three quarters of a stop. So we fire one off here. Okay, and I'm looking now, and it looks pretty darn good. I might just bring it up a tad in value. Again, this is a judgment call that only you as an artist can make. 
And since I've done thousands of portraits, I get a pretty good idea of what I want. So I just bumped it up maybe another third of a stop. Let's try it again. And to me, that's about right. So I got a highlight on her cheeks. Actually, pull your hair back just a tad more on that one side right there, just a little bit. We'll try another one. Okay, now drop your chin right there. Gorgeous. And it, let me just show you what it's going to look like. I'm going to try one. We'll go even more. So at least you have an option of showing sort of the three, the three, at least three different values. One, two, three. And that, again, might go and, and, and say for a beauty, head sh or beauty shot, that might be a better value. But I don't want that. I want to be a little bit, especially for a composite, I want to keep it to where it has some value change, build, building some depth. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. So that's what I like right there, right on the money. So let's do, also do one shot without the fill card. So this is without. And you can see underneath the chin, the lip here, the nose, the eyes, it's gotten a lot more, you know, contrasty and, and dark. So let's go put it back in here, right there. Bang, that's exactly the way I like it. So we've got that. So let's do this. I'm gonna have her move uh, in a couple different ways. Let's take and have you move. Remember, like, just look away j just a little bit. Just a little bit toward the light source there. Yeah, that's good. And that's going to put a little bit of a rim on her nose or the side of her, her forehead there and cheek. Right about, that's a good point spot right there. Let's do this right here. One, two, three. Gorgeous. Now, if I down power that just a little bit, that'll darken that just a tad more. And let's see what happens. Beautiful. Right on the money. And now look away again. Just kind of don't, yeah, don't look at me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to get a little bit more of uh, her shirt down to her black pants. To do that, I'm going to lower my camera. So my rule of thumb is that when I lower my camera, which is going to get down a little bit lower, if I don't lower my light, then I, it makes those shadows longer. So let's lower the light to match where the camera's at. And my fill card's gonna be a little lower, so I'm gonna lose a little bit of that. And I'm gonna drop it right out. Beautiful. Okay. So one of the things that you can do is, if you don't have, say, a five foot octo, one of the, one of the change outs that I use all the time is the 36 inch rapid box. It's a little smaller, a little bit more manageable. It's not as heavy also, so when you put on a boom, there's not as much weight. So that's a great choice to do exactly what I'm doing here. The difference is, obviously, it's a little bit smaller modifier, but we're so close to the model, I don't think there's gonna be that big of a difference. So that's another option you can use. Um, one of the other things that I was gonna mention is that I am shooting against a white wall. Now, because I'm about eight feet from the white wall, the wall turns to be just a slight gray, which makes it pretty easy to knock out. So that's one thing you might want to consider. If you're going to be using a, uh, say, a blonde, uh, the hair is going to be lighter. You could back everything away from the white a little bit, and then the gray is a little darker, and it's a little easier to knock out. So what we're going to do is I'll pick an image of Allie, uh, one of these images, and then we're going to put her in one of the urban backgrounds that I shot last night. We did a couple scenarios, went down to the dock, we shot um, some old rustic buildings. So well, hopefully one of those will work perfect and I'll get a chance to show you guys the final and how I did that. <laughs>